You're listening to Thunder Quack Podcast Network. Hello there, and welcome back to Force Perspectives, a podcast about Star Wars fans. Uh, I am your host, Michael Cohen, and uh, we, we've been we've been off for a little bit longer than anticipated. We're about a week late, but uh, but I hey, I was I was in Disneyland. I was riding Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, and uh, hanging out with uh, I, the people of Batu playing lots of Sabak. That's not a, like that's not even an exaggeration. I played. I think I played somewhere around like fifteen or sixteen hands of Sabak. Uh, well, ha- like like uh, games of Sabak while I was there. It was one of the most fun things that we were doing in Galaxy's Edge. So. Um, so uh, like I was living the Star Wars life, but I, 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 that <laughs> it messed up my schedule for recording. And, uh, and so it's, I've been a little bit delayed in, in getting this one out, but here we are, we're back. And, I uh, I, we've, I've got a great guest for this episode. Someone who much like Curtis on the last one, I have not really talked about Star Wars with that much. This is a person who I have talked about uh, DC, uh, Arrow, The Flash, Superman, uh, I, all of that stuff in in great detail at length, um, both online and offline. Uh, uh, well, I guess always online, but uh, on on air and off air, I should say. Um, and he's 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 been a good friend for a long time and a huge supporter of Thunder Quack uh, over the years. So I'm really excited to have a conversation about Star Wars uh, and his relationship with Star Wars with the one and only Andy Babacht from The Flash Podcast. Andy, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Michael. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is interesting. We don't talk about Star Wars very often. It's not really one of your big fandoms. You have a lot of fandoms. <laughs> but this this isn't one of this isn't one of your main ones. You you I we've talked a little bit here and there about Star Wars over the years, but but uh, but never really in depth. So I'm I'm interested to see where this conversation goes, uh, and to and to talk to you about about your relationship with and attitudes towards Star Wars. So uh, let's start let let's kind of start at the beginning and then we'll kind of go from there because I know that you have some stuff specifically that you want to talk about, but I just want to get a little bit of a primer on Thanks. like your history with Star Wars. So like w- like what's like your first what's the first time that you really remember engaging with Star Wars like 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 getting into it? Whether it's watching well, a movie or a TV show or whatever. So this might break Michael's heart a little bit, but I, you know, I, I you know, I like to keep it 100. Uh, you know, he's been <laughs> a good, good friend of mine for many years. So I would never lie to him. But um, so when I was a kid, I wasn't really allowed to watch Star Wars because my parents thought they were a little bit too freaking. So and I remember like actually like I saw like, a commercial for episode one with Darth Maul and you know mm-hmm. imagine you know, being like you know I don't know what year the movie came out but I was like so not even seven years old yet and that was like one of the most frightening things I've ever seen so like I had like you know like the next night nightmares immediately so Star Wars it was something like we just didn't do in my family that much you know I'm sure my sister had seen them my I'm pretty sure one of my parents had at least seen Star Wars but it wasn't until I was 18 years old. Everyone always, you know, from my, my, my adolescence, tried to convince me to watch Star Wars. But I just, you know, I had I was busy with school and I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was just try, trying to live my 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 best teenage life. <laughs> and so, but when I moved to London uh, for uh, for half a year to study at a film school, I, I had made a, a commitment to myself that I'm going to start watching a lot of like these like you know, classic sci-fi fantasy adventures, you know, you know, these like, you know, 
historical pop culture moments um in movies you know for you know movies in general uh so i you know i i bought all the um or maybe i borrowed them i don't remember but i i, got, I brought all the star wars movies with me to london you know i brought the lord of rings trilogy the extended cut and just remember like just consuming all of them like while i was there and attending um film school and i my you know my 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 first like impression of it was just it was so weird seeing Mark Hamill so like baby faced hmm. you know yeah. loud like and quite honestly in the four in episode four freaking annoying like <laughs> I like I wasn't like in like I was more invested in Princess Leia and. Uh, I felt one way or the other about Han Solo. Sometimes I was like, I want to follow him. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to throw him away. Uh, see, free people felt like who I am inside. Like I'm like, like this, like disastrous bisexual running around with you know with his uh, let's call him partner, uh, C free um, R D two, and yeah. but I just remember also how impressed I was that this was movies like. Was it not when did George Lucas make the first one? Was it 1972? Uh, no, the first Star Wars is 77. 1977. 77, 19, 1977. So, okay, yeah. So making it in 76, but he released in 77. Right. So 1977, and just how Im- phenomenal the movie looked. Hmm. Like, just for like, again, I'm like, because there's like, where's the CGI? Like, you know, what is, like, you know, and I didn't know about this larger history. And mm-hmm. then I remember I had finished the third one, uh, I mean, uh, episode six. And then the next night, I was listening to Michael on uh, a live episode of Geek, Geek Out Loud because that day they announced to the world that Disney had acquired Lucasfilm. <laughs> and I was like just laughing at how the internet was freaking out because I'm like, but isn't yeah. this... Isn't this what you wanted? Like, did you don't you want more Star Wars? Because I don't know if Clone Wars had been canceled at that point, but I just remember like people were freaking out for whatever reason. It was just yeah, it was bizarre. Uh, but no, I Clone, Clone Wars hadn't been canceled yet, but people were worried that that's what was going to happen. Mm. But but yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, you but you were one of my actually earliest Star Wars memories because like you know you had I don't know what the backstory was for that, but like, you were on the show with Steve and talking about the um, the acquisition and what mm. this could mean and you know because you know because you know cause it, here's the thing, um, <laughs> basically it was more like everyone like was more talking about the fact that Episode Seven was coming. No one really seemed to care that Disney was buying them initially. Yeah. So um. And then, like, yeah, I watched the first three, and then I'm like, "What else can I watch?" Um, and then I heard about the prequels, and I, I, I'd heard really bad things, but no one had really warned me about the danger that was Jar Jar Binks. Like, <laughs> I literally skied one of my friends home when I was watching the second one. I'm like, please, I don't want to watch anymore. Like, please tell me that he's gonna kill- killed off soon. He's like, "No, but he's barely in the third one." I'm like, "Fine," and. I haven't revisited those movies ever since. Um, but then I moved back home. Uh, and then two years later, episode seven came out. And that's why I really started becoming a, a bigger fan of Star Wars. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, like, there's a there are a lot of people now that um, they either came in through the Clone Wars or or they came in through Star Wars Rebels or or the the sequel films uh uh seven eight nine so it's i i think that you would find that they it's it's not actually that uncommon at this point to not really have too much of a connection to to the original trilogy characters or or even the the prequel trilogy characters because i mean we're in the midst of clone wars in 2008 when we started doing that podcast um and and then talking with the community and stuff there was a lot of sentiment of like I, I, well, who, who's this show for, you know, I'd rather that they make a show about, you know, like classic trilogy stuff or whatever. And that was coming from people that were sort of in their thirties and older, um, at that time, 2008 now, like 14 years ago. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. but there, but what I found 
hosting that podcast is that all of a sudden there, there was this whole group of kids that, that were about 10 years younger than me, the teenagers at the time. Um, they, that were like, Oh man, I love the podcast so much. The prequels are my star Wars. This is what I grew up with. Clone Wars is like right up my alley because I love the prequels so much. I love Anakin and Obi-Wan and, and, uh, and the clone troopers and all of that stuff. And it was like, Oh cool. Like there's like a whole, there's a whole generation that like uh, Phantom Menace was their first time seeing a star Wars movie. Right. And so for them, they don't have anything to compare it to at that point. Right. It's their entry into the world. So George R. Binks is just a, is just a, a, a piece of that. And they're at the right age where that, that character works. Right. I'll tell you my, uh, my, my three and six year old, they, they, they love Jar Jar Binks. They think he's great. And that's exactly why he's in the movie because star Wars movies are for kids. Um, and, and, or is very, 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 very quickly erasing that from a lot of people's minds that star Wars is meant to be for children. Uh, or at least that's how George Lucas intended it. And that's okay. I think it's fine for Andor to be what it is. Um, but I, it, I think it's just also important to remember that this shouldn't be all that star Wars is right. Like it, it, much like the MCU, it's like we can have darker uh, stories in the MCU, but then I also hope that we have lots of stories like Miss Marvel that allow young kids to get into it, right? Uh, yeah. These good entry points and that sort of thing. So Star Wars, I think, needs to needs to also have that balance. Um, but but even as I continue podcasting about Star Wars. I uh, and and the sequels come out and everything. I mean, like many of my friends online, many of my friends on Twitter are sequel fans. They're specifically Raylos, right? Like they they love that dynamic between Kylo Ren and Ray, and uh, uh, or Ray and Ben Solo, depending on which side of the conversation you're you're on. And uh, and for them, it's like like the prequels are fine. The original trilogy is fine. It's not really their jam. They are very specifically into the sequels. And then there are some people that I'm friends with that I talk to about star Wars. They really only like the last Jedi. It's kind of the only star Wars that they feel speaks to them. Um, and, and that is because it is so different from the rest of, of the way that star Wars is handled. So I, I being that it is so romantically focused in that, in that story, but that's the great thing about star Wars 40 some odd years on is that, um, there isn't a right or a wrong way into it or uh, a, an aspect to focus on. So like if Han Solo is not your jam, I don't necessarily understand that because I think Han Solo is one of the best characters ever put on film. Oh, well, but... I mean, that was my initial thought. Yeah. So, like, you know, of course, like now, like, you know, because I mean, Harrison Ford is a legend, you know, like I yeah. just, I just love him doing interviews about Star Wars. He's like, <laughs> who gives a crap? Like, yeah, like, yeah. like Michael, he's going to be doing interviews about the MCU. What do you think he's going to do when the man is like, do, you know, like, what do you think about the Infinity Stones? Or like, what do you think about the Gauntlet? Or like, you know, do you think Thanos is going to say, thing? yeah, he's going to say the same thing that he says about Star Wars. He's going to be like, I don't care. <laughs> So like, and it's going to be great. It's fantastic. I love Harrison Ford because here's the thing about Harrison Ford. And don't, uh, don't, don't, don't tell anybody else that I said this, but um, that whole thing that he does is a bit, it's a bit, it's a comedy bit. And, and he, uh, I mean, I think he genuinely doesn't care about the things that people ask. I mean, um, I, Oscar Isaac tells the story of when, uh, the first day that, that, that Harrison was, that he met Harrison, uh, which I think was the table read, the one, like the, the picture that they released in 20. Oh, the, uh, the black and white one. Yeah. The black and white one. Uh, and he goes up to him and he's like, Hey, so I'm a pilot. Like it's my whole, my whole deal is I'm a pilot and, you know, flying spaceships and star Wars. And you got any pointers for me? And Harrison Ford was like, it's all, it's all made up. <laughs> it's all, it's fake. doesn't matter. Do it. Just, just just do what you feel like doing <laughs> just make it look good or whatever and uh, and and Oscar Isaac was kind of like yeah no yeah 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 of course yeah it's fake it's there's no there's Aww. no uh, Harrison Ford having been the most uh, 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 celebrated pilot in Star Wars uh, up until that point right um yeah uh, he was like 
Right. And and I think that I think like the nature of the question was like, oh, Harrison Ford actually flies planes. Right. And it was like, it doesn't matter. It's not real. <laughs> like your spaceship's not real. It's just just do stuff. It's a set. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, and, I, and I, so I think I, I am firmly of, of the belief that like Harrison Ford is just messing with us whenever he does that stuff. Um uh, whenever he's just like, like, I don't care. It's like, he doesn't, but I, he does, he, he doesn't care about the, um, the, the little like nitpicky things that fans want to ask him about, like, like, Oh, like how do how do you fly the millennium Falcon? Or like, you know, I, I, how, how is it that you can understand Chewbacca? What, like they ask him like in universe questions and he's like, it's a, none of that matters. But I do think that he cares a great deal about the character. I think he cares a great deal about the relationships in the films um, and and his part in those. I mean, all you have to do is is see the clip of uh, when when they ambushed Alden Ehrenreich during the the solo press junkets, um, and they brought Harrison in, and it was the first time that they I think it was the first time that Alden met Harrison. And, but it was certainly the first time that they had spoken since Harrison had seen the movie because he basically walks up and he's like, I just watched it. It was fantastic. And and what he says to Alden is like, I thought what you did was so smart, like like talking about like his performance. Right. Um, and it it's like it's in that moment you get to see you get to see actual like real Harrison Ford, not the yeah. Harrison Ford that he that he is on talk shows and stuff like that where he's this grumpy curmudgeonly guy but where he's like like the actor the the artist the performer who who like looks at this kid who's playing the character that only harrison ford has ever played right yeah other than we're not counting video game voice actors and stuff but like on screen and saying to him like like relating to him on that level and talking to him and being like 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 I really like the choices that you made, right? Like the like the way that you decided to play Han Solo as a young man, as opposed to Han as as uh, uh, the 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 cynic that we meet him as in in A New Hope, right? Um, and and so like I see stuff like that. And it's like he genuinely cares. He cares about this character. He came back to play Han in The Force Awakens for a reason. He showed up in Rise of Skywalker because that was the right thing to do right um because obviously that should have been carrie's scene but uh Mm. but but that doesn't work right so so he comes back and he he plays that character one more time uh just for that right like like it it, he does care he does care but i but i I like i just want to i think it's funny like when he does yeah no it is it's hilarious i love it yeah, because like you know, because sometimes I even think you know, I mean, there's you know, you, you and I we're passionate fans, but even sometimes you know, I think you and I can agree that there are people in our respective fans that can take things a little far, bit too far. Oh, and, I mean, I, like most of the time, most of the fans take things too far. I think, I, I think, I think, I think the nature of being a fan starts with taking it too far and then i think that those of us who've been in fandom for a long time and have a lot of experience in these spaces learn to pull it back a little bit and to 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 uh uh, divest which is the opposite of investing divest Mm -hmm. a little bit of our of our identities from it i mean you and i have had that conversation about the dc stuff right oh yeah and i think over the last couple of years Last, over the last couple of years, you've you've taken that to heart when I've said to you, like, I think you need to like step back a little bit and not not get quite so invested in the way that these things are going, right? Because because I think that you and I both over the years have had that with the DC stuff. Because look, it's being a Star Wars fan is rough. Um, I the the fandom is is not in what I would consider a healthy place right now. Um, it's better than it's been over the last couple of years, but it's definitely not in a good place. Uh, American politics and global politics has has a part to play in that as well. But uh, but being a DC fan, like here's the thing: at least with Star Wars, we get consistently good stuff, right? I mean, like this week alone, we just got a, an incredible episode of Andor. Um, unless you have anxiety about people being in prison, which, which I definitely do. It's still a fantastic episode. It was just really, really rough to watch for me personally. Uh, and then we also got six episodes of Tales of the Jedi, which is just like they're six. They're about 15 to 20 minute uh, short episodes um, about Count Dooku and, and Ahsoka Tano and like filling in gaps that I, I 
and answering questions that, that fans have been asking for a really, really long time. And like, just the animation is phenomenal. The voice performances are unbelievable. We get Liam Neeson back as Qui-Gon Jinn. I, I, it's just like, like we're so lucky as star Wars fans to just constantly be, I uh, hit with, you know, I uh, thing after thing. And, and like, I'm not even into the high Republic stuff, but people who are, are like feasting right now because there's so much great high Republic content coming out. Um, and, and, you know, there are books and it's, and it's all generally pretty good. And then DC fans on the other side, I, I got to wait around. Uh, I mean, unless you're talking about the CW shows, which there's, there's still plenty of that going on, but, we don't need to get into the quality level of the CW shows at the moment. I, I, and sort of, you know, that, that feels like it's waning a little bit. Um, but like with the movies, it's like, they just, they just keep dropping real stinkers. And like, I mean, not all of them suicide squad, the suicide squad, I should say, be really specific. The suicide squad is a fantastic movie. Birds of prey. Also a fantastic movie. Love Peacemaker her. last year was fantastic. Um, the Batman earlier this year was was incredible, way better than I expected it to be. But at the same time, then we get it's like, it's like okay, are we moving away from from the DC EU or are we sticking with it? And then you get Black Adam, which is like, oh man, the most offensively boring superhero what? movie I've ever seen. In oh, my life. Michael, I need to leave. Like, I mean, I'm the one. Did you like here. Black Adam? Did you like Black Adam? For as a Middle Eastern, I it was so empowering, right? What's what's going on? Was it? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just jump in right here on that comment and say I understand where you're coming from. That is not the intent of that story. I don't think like I think that you're putting a lot of your own personal stuff onto that. I think that like it, from my perspective, which is my perspective as a as a mostly white guy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I am Jewish, so like I, I, I can relate a little bit, but but I I I saw that as much more of like a, 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 an artificial emotional appeal to try and make uh, to try and make Black Adam's story interesting in a film, and like it just I don't I don't think that. I don't think that what they showed on screen portrayed anything that was real. It was not a real um depiction of of because i know like what you're talking about like like what's happening in iran right now is yeah is that, 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 monumental that's right yeah yeah, because, yeah like, which you know, i that's so i hadn't even con- yeah i hadn't even considered that perspective when thinking about black adam i love that we're on we're on dc stuff in the middle of a star wars podcast because we, because because guys we, we, for, we, we michael and i we have literally not podcasted since jan either, no no wait no, because Amanda came on for part two of Christ. Michael yeah. and I have not podcasted since December, December 2019. Yeah, pre-pandemic. Oh, boy. Um, oh, remember, remember yeah, that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that the, the creatives working on Black Adam uh, made an effort to try and represent the the struggle of, of um, like, Middle Eastern people. I. Uh, I uh, well, here, in a here. genuine way, I think that they used it as a springboard to tell a story about The Rock shooting lightning at people and killing a bunch of people. I I think that if they had, if that had been like a very real look at, because if they wanted to, I think that it would have been less about like it wouldn't have been intergang. Using intergang automatically turns that into like it's a comical farce of of a of an occupation because intergang in the comics is not like. You don't oh, they're, consider they're, they're, not this, they're not this at all. I think what yeah, I, mean, I like, think what I'm coming at is because for me, for me, when it comes to this, is that mm. you know, again, I'm seeing you know, I mean, here's the thing. what's going on around right now. It, it, it's not just just happening right now. It's been happening for you. I mean, my parents yeah. had to, they had to leave their lives behind during the Iran Iraq war. For, you know, so that my sister could be saved. She, she was one years old when they left that country, and you know. They had to come to another country and learn a whole language and, you know, and like really start from scratch. And, you know, they've all they've done for the last all of our lives is just to make sure that me and my sister will be like protected and safe whenever, mm-hmm. you know, whenever they leave this world behind. And so for me, but, you know, also like I have a lot of Middle Eastern friends from a, a lot of different countries who are, you know, they're having to see some horrible things in their homes, homes, uh, 
home countries, you know, where they come from, that he probably had to leave behind because it's not safe for him to live there. And um, but. You know, so when I look at Black Adam, because the thing is that this film has been, been like a long time coming. But I also mm-hmm. know that because, you know, Black Adam is also rooted in the world of Middle East. And yeah. I think actually one of the screenwriters is also, I think he's Arab, actually. So yeah. um, I feel, and I, I'm actually glad they didn't take a real life problem because I think like you, you're not going to satisfy anyone with that. There's going to be people like, well, that's actually not what's going on in Palestine. No, that's not what's going on in Iraq. Or that's not what's going on sure. in and uh, all these things so for me like yeah i mean i'm not you know yes i mean people can f- say whatever they want they think that i'm projecting too much or whatever and so but in my in my viewpoint like i as someone who is like you know, i mean i'm constantly being put down as a middle eastern you know like, i have to fight for for yeah. a spot on the uh, at the table when it comes to uh you know just getting access to interviews and getting to do screen you know getting screeners and just getting to you know do coverage you know because we, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of us in the Hollywood industry, but then also yeah. having to see like on the big screen in a TV, and that's also you know I will definitely relate it back to Star Wars at some point. But there's just not a lot of us up there. So when I see Black oh. Adam, you know, like yeah, I mean, listen, The Rock is larger than life itself. So, but when I see Black Adam, um, you know, the first, you know, he's a champion of conduct. And we see the people of conduct, you know, that people could be, they, they, they could be my cousins. They could be my, they could be my d- distant relatives. And they are fighting a good fight. The JSA, in a lot of ways, they are, they, I love the JSA in the movie, but they are problematic as hell because they only showed up when it fitted them. They knew yeah. about what was going on in Conda, but they, like they just showed up like 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 how mi- American military and cops are portrayed. They're only showing up mm-hmm. when when it suits them and yeah. only them. And that's why I'm just like this is disgusting. So, so yeah, and and like I th- the this is the tough part, part about this conversation. Everything that you just said is correct and I agree with you on. But the movie itself in execution conceptually all of that stuff is there a hundred percent it's there and it's all it's not even hard to find it it's not like it's 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 uh not presented what uh like like presented clearly it's presented very clearly as a matter of fact it's presented so clearly that our characters just say a lot of the stuff that you just said but we don't actually see anything right like we don't actually we don't actually see the people of Kondok suffering. We're just told that they're suffering under intergang, right? We don't like, they, they don't actually spend any time other than, you know, like, Oh, they're stuck at a checkpoint at one point. Right. Like, like it's very surface. And then, and then the JSA stuff, which could have been very poignant and very interesting is said. And then very quickly, just like, like brushed past and we move on to the next thing. Right. And I think that ultimately what that ends up doing is that by the end of the movie, when when we do see the people of conduct, this is a little bit spoilery, but I'm not too worried about it because it's about the journey, not the destination. The people of conduct are like, you know, fighting for themselves. It, like I get where that that I understand what they were going for. And this is where like I'll compare it to Morbius, which I haven't actually watched. <laughs> but I've listened, but I've listened to a few reviews. I've talked to a few people about this movie. And I know that like Morbius, Morbius fails in execution in that it is a bad story. There are bad performances in it. The special effects are cheesy as hell. Um, And, and it just, nothing ends up working. Like thematically, it doesn't make any sense. Like it's just a total, it's just a total nightmare, but at least we can meme some of it. Right. The problem I have with, with Black Adam as a film is that it, from a story perspective, plot wise it's fine like the plot the plot uh, all makes sense and 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 it's logical and uh, organic and and on paper i'm sure it looked really good there's a bunch of choices that they make in the movie like like slow motion musical sequences that where you're like this doesn't make any sense a clint eastwood reference that comes out of nowhere and has no place in the film and it, i don't understand why it's there um but but most of like but that like so it rips off it rips off the slow motion musical sequence from uh, like the, which is like a Quicksilver thing, right? From the, the, the first class era of, of X-Men movies. Right. Um, so it does that and it does it really badly. It does it very, very badly. Um, it also, it, it simultaneously is also ripping off the, um, 
immigrant song moment from Thor Ragnarok. Like it's, it's, it's mashing those two things together and making a very, very bad version of both of them. Uh, it's got an obnoxious kid who is like our <gasps> audience, our audience no. uh, cypher, right? Like it's, which is Michael, a, that is baby me doll. You're literally that, spitting at me as a baby. Fi- no, I'm not. I'm not because it's fine for you to be that kid watching that movie, but it is, but it's a it, it's egregious to put a character like that into a film in the year 2022. It's it, it, like we know better than this. It's not 1993, right? Like like it, it just the 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 Terminator 2 wannabe vibes, which like T2 is one of the only movies where that ever works. I I it's this feels much more like Last Action Hero and not in the great ways. I. But it's like it's just like every movie from the '90s where it's like, oh, if we want kids to watch this, we got to put a kid in it. I, I, and he's a, and he says obnoxious things. You got to have a catchphrase. You got to have a catchphrase, Black Adam. Well, we don't call him Black Adam for the whole movie. We, it, the movie, the movie ends. Here is a spoiler. The movie, and it's a spoiler. It's not a spoiler at all. The movie ends with Black Adam fighting, uh, a buck a different black Adam, basically the guy with the same powers as him, but this guy's evil and and black Adam's not evil. And then we got to spend the whole movie with black Adam telling us that he's not a hero as he does in fact, continue to do heroic things the entire time. Um, and also in a DCEU where Batman kills dudes, Batman breaks people's necks. Like, so black Adam tossing a guy 300 feet into the air and watching him die. Not really that shocking for me in this world. Amanda Waller sent in the JSA. That means that the JSA, not good guys, (laughs) right? Like the second that you bring Amanda Waller into the conversation, whoever is working for Amanda Waller is either a bad guy straight up because they're part of the suicide squad or they're a heroic ish character who looks the other way when Amanda Waller does bad stuff, which means that they are like also like by association, not great people. Ha- uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't want to get into the big, yeah, big spoiler. It's, it's, pro- it's like, fine. It's fine. Cause we're probably, we're probably going to duke it out. Like we always do. I mean, yeah, no, I I'm glad. I'm glad that you found merit in it. Um, I think that your perspective as as a, a, a person of color and and specifically like w- with your cultural connection to to the 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 um, imaginary culture of Kondok, right? Because let's be clear, the like, Kondok's not a real place, yeah, but it yeah. is modeled after real places, right? Um, so like they your your personal connection concept. to that, I think, is adding a layer on top of Black Adam that to the general audience does not come through. Because I, because you are the first person that I have heard talk about Black Adam, and and add that layer onto it. Everybody else that I've heard talk about Black Adam is much more in the camp with me, um, and so I like your experience of it is totally valid, and 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 you definitely like even me. The DCU, the Suicide yeah. Squad is an offensive movie because we literally have sequences where innocent brown people are murdered, and then they joke about it. Like, oops, I didn't mean to. I didn't know they were resistant fighters. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that. I mean, like, I, I, I like, I, I think that that's also a valid perspective, right? Um, but I, but, but the thing about Suicide Squad, those aren't, we're not supposed to cheer for the Suicide Squad, right? We're supposed to, especially, especially Peacemaker in that movie. We're not supposed to cheer for Peacemaker. I, I, <laughs> but anyways, I, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. It, it's it, it, it's it's a whole thing, right? Let's get back to Star Wars. Let's talk. Star get back Wars, into yeah, talking yeah. Star Wars. We've been going for forty seven minutes, and 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 we haven't gotten to, this, to your this, main thing. This, this, this it's, is what we do, guys. This is what we it's do. related, though. It's related to what we what we were just talking about. Very much right? so. Very much so. Um, um, to kind of go into like what why it wasn't until Force Awakens when I started really connecting with Star Wars was, and I. I think one of the reasons why I also never rushed myself as a kid, you know, even though I wasn't even allowed to see them, but why I also like never really cared for Star Wars. You know, when I, all the other kids in my class were talking about Star Wars, I just didn't care. And mm-hmm. but I don't know like why none of it seemed very appealing to me. And it wasn't until I saw episode seven. I was it was my, me and my big sister. That was like the first movie in a very long time we had gone together to see in the movies together. And I remember seeing Oscar Isaac. One of the, the planet's most beautiful men of all time, but I saw a brown man in the Star Wars universe being powerful, being badass, 
being mm-hmm. inspiring, being sassy. And he wasn't like, you know, because for me, like, again, and, you know, for, for, I will say this to anyone listening. If you don't like talking about representation, then I'm not the, I'm not the guy you want to listen to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because for me, when I look at, when I look at him, because the problem is that a lot of media, uh, especially a lot of American, American media, they depict Middle Easterns in a very bad light for most of the times. Yep. Uh, 9-11 changed everything, you know, as, tra- oh, I, th- th- as, monumentally tragic as that moment um, event was for all the lives that were lost that day and all the people whose lives were affected by it the middle eastern world was forever villainized Mm -hmm. as we're nothing but terrorists if you see a a woman with hijab or if you see someone with a turban or whatever so at an airport or they have a backpack it enables people to get an excuse to be suspicious, to be worried, or to accuse uh, one of terrorism. You know, like I get almost, uh, I mean, I haven't fl- flown since uh, 2019, but almost, at least when I was traveling back and forth, at least once I would have to do the quote unquote random security checks. Um, yeah. You know, even though like you could see that I was clear not hiding anything. Cause, and that's the thing, I would have to adapt how I would dress. I would just put on like, you know, I would I would even put on socks. I would just put on shoes, shorts, and a tank top. Nothing like no sweater, no shirt. Even when there was one time it was rainy and I had to just you know freeze. But I'm like, no, they need to be able to see that I'm not hiding anything. So I don't don't mm. they don't think I'm suspicious. So when I see Oscar Isaac as as Poe, and just I see people around me like in the theater, just like you know they're enjoying him, they're cheering for him, they're thinking he's badass, he's awesome. I finally felt seen in the Star Wars universe. Now, again, I want to make it perfectly. I'm perfectly aware that Oscar Isaac and I were not of the same background, you know, uh, but we're both brown men. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you can tell, you can see on him that he's a brown man. It's nothing, there's nothing ethnically ambiguous about him. So to see Poe thrive and then having such a great relationship with Finn, you know, and of course, I, I will say I'm a pin shipper. Like, I was totally on board for that. They, they, they are my stucky of the Star mm. Wars universe. And I know I'm never going to get it, but it was just so thrilling to see that. But then on the other end, what has been so demeaning over the last couple of years is just that any time any of us people of color get mm-hmm. a chance there is all this hatred on the other side there's of course celebration there is there's love there's kindness but on the other side and they're the ones that always seem to be the loudest there's so much hatred they're saying that putting yeah. any of us in one of these things is woke it is an S- it is sjw and it's like it is a political decision meaning that we shouldn't exist and meaning that they don't think of us as real because why they, they, they don't see us as you know the you know the norm yeah they don't see yeah. us as, you know by putting us there it's like oh it's because you know it's left-wing agenda it's because you know they want to get woke points or whatever but i mean it's like no we're just as real human beings as why people are yeah. And yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, I think, I think it has been really good over the last little bit. I, I say both MCU and, and uh, the star Wars galaxy is like, they, they both made real efforts, but, but the blowback is uh, exponential compared to the progress. Right. Which I think is the, is sort of what you're getting at. That's that, that's the disheartening part. But, but I will say that I think, I think what we're seeing, and I think that this is just in general across the board, uh, uh, and we sort of saw this in the in in the 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 '80s and the early '90s with regards to uh, like the gay community, right? Is that like it was re- it's very villainized and 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 targeted and that sort of thing because it was gaining acceptance, right? And so we're in a similar place here where like. And and I'm not to say that the that, that that the gay community is like, you know, one at this point. I think that there's still a long road ahead for LGBTQ uh, uh, acceptance across the board. But I think that we're in a better place now than we were in 1970, right? So um, I think we're in the same place now with, um, oh, uh, like with with uh, uh, 
like ethnic r- racial representation uh, in media. And I think the, I think the problem that we encounter is that genre storytelling is the best place to push forward on this stuff um, because we're in fantasy worlds and that sort of thing. So, so um, uh, you know, there, there are things that, 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 uh, that we can do that, um, that, that in, you know, like, like it's it's just sitcoms aren't the same it's not it's not the same sort of cultural impact i don't think um and and it's just like from a storytelling perspective i think that people just writers oftentimes just think like oh we'll write these characters and then you put start putting white people in those roles right that's just what happens or it's an all black sitcom or it's an all latino sitcom or whatever right like but with genre storytelling science fiction and fantasy i we get these opportunities to create these new worlds and these new worlds can be populated by whoever we want. Right. And so there's an opportunity there to do that. And star Wars has been really good about it in the last few years. I mean, look, we've got Andor on TV right now, uh, which is led by Diego Luna. uh, And we've got the Mandalorian, which is another show led, uh, it's led by Pedro Pascal, uh, another Latino actor. Right. Uh, and and earlier this year we had Book of Boba Fett led by Tamura Morrison and Ming Na Wen, a a, 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 a Maori man and uh, a and a Chinese woman, right? Like, I and th- those are those are the main arms of of the Star Wars TV experience. And then we had Obi Wan, obviously, where we're kind of we're kind of stuck on that one, right? <laughs> we're gonna do an Obi Wan Kenobi show. We gotta, we've definitely got to put Obi-Wan front and center, but what did they also do on that show? Right. We've got Indira Varma uh, brought in as a major character. We've got uh, uh, Kumail Nanjiani coming into star Wars as, as a, as a, a really awesome new character. Right. So um, it's like, I, like I see that and I say, it's so, so great. It's so, so positive, but the people who are afraid of that world, the people who feel like they're going to lose out on something, fragile white people right they're gonna they're gonna fight this tooth and nail because they don't they can't see a world where uh everybody still has an opportunity right they see this and they see they see that their opportunities are being taken away um which is which is absurd we know that logically right but it's not the problem is that you can't fight this logically because it's an emotional thing, right? And the, and and in the real world, we have fascism on the rise, and those fascist uh, uh, dictators and 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 bad players in that scene are using things like Star Wars and Marvel and DC and like these these popular quotes and Lord of the Rings, right? Rings of Power was a really big part of this conversation this year. Mm-hmm. Um, that are using these things in order to shore up their base, right? So you've got a guy like Trump who's not going to necessarily say, I don't think that there should be black or brown people in Star Wars, but he's definitely going to say things like, oh, these, like, and that's where the coded stuff comes in, where you're talking about like, oh, it's woke, all these woke TV shows now, everything's got to be uh, this and that and woke this. Well, and like, they're all dog whistles, right? They're racist dog whistles. And, and, and that's, just building and building and building on this. So we get this, this hugely vocal minority, this incredibly, incredibly loud vocal minority that thinks that they've been empowered to say these things. And it sucks. I hate it because I want you to feel like you're represented in star Wars, you know? And I also just selfishly, even though I'm, I'm uh, just, you know, like a, a, a mostly white, definitely white presenting white privileged individual watching star Wars, but selfishly for me, I just want more variety in, in the stuff that I'm watching. I want stories that focus on other cultures and bring in those other cultural elements. I mean, Miss Marvel is one of the, my favorite things that I watched this year. And oh, God bless. like, like what a what a phenomenal story about a family that also like, cause that's really what it's about, right. Is about family. But, but then it also dug into like uh, partition and, and India and Pakistan and, the relationship there and, and, um, and, and sort of the historical trauma, uh, that leads into family trauma and how that has affected immigrants in America. And it like, like 
using that as a platform to tell that story and to watch that with my kids, to watch that with Kara and to see her uh, see those stories on screen. And then to ask me questions, right? And we have a conversation about it. And I'm so lucky that I live in Vancouver and I have friends from all sorts of cultural persuasions. Um, and so when they're getting into the whole eyed thing and uh, and Cara's like, what's well, like, because she'd also learned a little bit about that in school. And she's like, what's that about? Um, and I'm like, well, we'll talk to to my friend Mansur and uh, and we'll and we'll see we can we can go to an I'd celebration where like the next time that, that I'd comes around and that's what our plan is. Right. And that, that representation turns into that. And then we get to experience that. And my favorite part of that experience is the, like, is the food part. Uh, Cause man, I just think if everybody just got the opportunity to, to, um, to sit down and have a good, if you're racist, right? Like if you're, if you're somebody who's like, Oh, I don't like X doesn't matter. I don't care which culture pick one. I don't like them. And, but then you like sit down and have a, a meal like with, with people from that culture. I, uh, I, uh, and like, like some authentic food cooked with love. And, uh, and I'll, I think it's hard to be racist after that. If you dart, then you're just a bad person, right? Yeah. Then you're evil. I, yep. uh, I, but, but because to me, it's like, that is the key. I, uh, and, and I think that like star Wars can be a really great, gateway into that because we can do it in a way where like you say you know that poe is not poe's not anything he lives in star wars right he's Uh he's from yavin 4 (laughs) but he's from yavin 4 because yavin the backdrop for yavin was guatemala and his family his i think it's his father is from guatemala so that's his that's his heritage so when he got cast in the role he said I would really like it if in the backstory that Poe is from Yavin four, cause I'm from Yavin four. Right. Um, so, you know, that like, like, like you say, like you're well aware that his background and your background aren't the same, aren't the same, but the very fact that a person with a different skin tone is being represented, um, isn't, is enough, uh, which is almost like at, at, on, on the one hand, yay, I'm very happy for that. On the other hand, how sad is it in terms of representation that for you, that you have to be like, I will cling to this because this is what I get. Right. Like it, which, which isn't fair for you. I think that you should have the same representation as anybody else, Can I add but it's good. That, it has been better and, 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 and more, more characters have been added. I mean, like we've got Riz Ahmed in Rogue One. Right. So that's, that's a, you but know, but he's dead, you know, but he's dead though now. So like, by the end of that story. Sure. Star, but look, Star Wars, Star Wars doesn't play linearly, right? So we go back and we could tell stories about Bodhi Rook, right? And 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 you know, there are other there there are other opportunities and other characters. I mean, like I said, Kumail Nanjiani being added added into Star Wars. That's a character that I think that we're gonna see more of at some point. He'll pop up somewhere. Um he can't not. He's such a great character. I I, I gotta say that I gotta say that when it comes to um um when it comes to when it comes to um you know like th- that is all i have to cling on to i don't yeah. look at it that way because i know that that you know star wars isn't about america it's not about europe it's not about iran it's not about any like yeah. it's it's about space for me i think with, with star i just accept the fact that people who look like me are in that universe is great now of course would i love to see more persian actors get cast in star yeah. wars oh hell yeah like if i google like i because i'm trying to remember uh if there even are any persian actors in star wars if i if there are um well there's apparently well the first one that comes is a voice actor named omid aptai yeah i don't i don't, I, i'm not good with names uh he voiced a character named amos in star wars the clone wars whoever that is mm. um but it's like it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. He's, like, no, I- so he's he's also he is also in in the live action because he plays Doctor Pershing, uh, in in the Mandalorian stuff. He's like the he's the he's the 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 guy when the um when Grogu is delivered to the bad guys. He's the doctor that's going to perform the experiments or whatever. That's like drawing his blood. My, my sweet Michael, let me tell you something. Yeah. I after. For- the Rise of Skywalker. I took a break from Star Wars until Obi Wan, so I haven't even seen Mandalorian yet. You haven't seen any of the Mandalorian yet? Oh my goodness, Andy, saw, you gotta watch Mando. I, I I saw I I mean you know after uh, Obi Wan, I kind of like you know what like once I get you know once I finish Shameless, I might get into uh, 
uh, Mandalorian. Um, Boba Fett doesn't look, it only looks interesting to me because of Ming Na Wen, so I may watch that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen like, I mean, okay, so you're gonna laugh at this. Okay, get ready for this. So uh, this was season six of the Flash podcast, and we we were talking about an episode, and somehow Baby Yoda came up. Now at this mm. point, I didn't know about the existence of Baby Yoda, so I literally broke into tears on air, seeing like images of him, and like finding out like, wait, I'm like, wait, who's Baby Yoda? And they start like my host. I mean, first of my co-host, they grilled me because like, how can you not know? <laughs> but, but. Then they send me the gift of where he's sipping tea. I'm like, oh my god, this is my new like profile picture. Oh my goodness! And I'm yeah, Michael. I, my, Michael, I'm crying. Like I'm actually sobbing on the damn podcast about the Flash somehow working in Star Wars represented there. So, um, but no, but 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 still, like you know, for me, if I can see more Persian actors in yeah. Star Wars, that's enough for me. I don't need like here's the thing. Because you know what? Here's the, here's the thing. As beautiful as 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 beautiful as Iran is as a country, it is also a hellhole right now. So for me, like, I don't need stories set in Iran because yeah. Iran is not a good place right now. But I need to see my people. Like I like a Persian Jedi. That would be super cool. Um, yeah. You know, like that would be awesome. But I don't think I'm ever gonna get that, you know, because I think that sometimes, like you know, with Disney, like they they like to take one step forward, two steps backward mm. with diversity. Like for example, like I mean, like for example, something that happened in the MCU, for example, uh, is that when they um, America Chavez, who is in uh, Doctor Strange too, who she was amazing, she was wonderful, but in the comics, uh, America is drawn as a dark skin brown woman. In the movie, they they when they had a colorism problem where they tapped a light skinned Latina as mm-hmm. America Chavez, and that is that is also a big problem. And I yeah. think that you know, for me, like for me right uh, now, I just want to see Star. I want to yeah. see Star Wars tap more. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I am gonna tell you this for a fact is is that they um Ezra Bridger that character. I know I know he's he's I don't. I don't know if the actor, I don't know the ethnicity, the specific ethnicity of the actor that's been cast to play him um, in live Which action. Which one is Ezra again? Ez, Ezra is the lead character in Star Wars Rebels. Like it's like, I mean, that's an ensemble show, but but really Ezra is like our Luke Skywalker in that story. As a matter of fact, Ezra shares his birthday with Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. So, um, and Ezra is a, is a central character in Star Wars now since Star Wars Rebels. That character is absolutely 100% intended to be like Persian inspired, right? It's again, it's Star Wars. So it's like, it's not a one-to-one and that entire cast, all of the, the human characters in that cast in Star Wars Rebels are, are meant to be uh, like mixed race. Um, but none of them, like the, the three human characters, Kane and Jarrus, uh, Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren, not, none of them are white. Like that's like first and foremost, like, 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 un, like Pablo Hidalgo has specifically said that, but Ezra, I mean, like right from his name, Ezra is meant to be Middle Eastern. Um, so, uh, and, and like when you see him and his family, like it's very clear that they are meant to be Middle Eastern. I don't know that like, like, again, it's, it's difficult to like give it a one-to-one. Right. Um, and, and I, I believe that Taylor Gray who voiced him was a, is a Caucasian actor, but the actor that's playing him in live action, uh, uh, let me just look it up live action. It's, yeah, I, was, it, I was looking up him too, while you were talking, um, uh, yeah. Eman Esfandi. Yeah. Um, yeah, I so don't I, know what his ethnicity, but I can tell. I mean, I mean, I was kind of hoping for Mina Masood from Aladdin. That's who I wanted as well. I definitely wanted Mina Masood as well because I loved him in Aladdin. I thought he was so charming, um, and I thought he'd be perfect for this role. But, uh, but, but, like, I'm just excited that this character is coming to live action and that this is this is going to be a lead character in Star Wars, right? So. Um, so yeah, like I, I, you say, you say that you don't think that you'll ever see a Persian Jedi and I'm like, uh, Ezra is like right there, right? Like he's, he is, he, he definitely is intended to be, um, uh, representative in that way. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think that, that it's, it's beyond, uh, beyond hope, I, th- I think that one day we'll we'll get to see more of these types of characters. 
representation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, but you, you also have to just remember, Michael, for me, like, for me, like, I have to ask for, you know, like, the bare minimum. Like, you know, I have to, you know, I can't get my hopes up too high because I never know, like, if it's worth investing in. For me, like, I mean, this this year, you know, we I lost the only two main Persian car- superheroes we had in live action through Legends of Tomorrow. You know, both Zari and Bera are now gone. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, I'm just like, for me, I'm just like, I... When I when I come at, when I come at it from my perspective, it is more of a I don't you know I think it will happen one day, but I'm not putting a lot of faith in them because again, you know, like and that's why for example I was I think I was so more defensive of Black Adam for example because I I don't think like for example Disney would ever be you know be, I don't think Disney could ever do a movie like that because I think they they would be too too worried about pissing off their mm-hmm. their very conservative advertisers that we we know that we, it's not a it's not a theory we know they have very conservative traditional uh, values um and that's why I'm like, for example like, i mean for me besides seeing just purges i want to see more lgbt representation in the Star yep. Wars. like and like i was very pissed with rise of skywalker when because some people were celebrating it, some people were like, but it's not a big deal. And that's where I stand, where there's at the very end of the film, there's these yeah. two women who kiss each other very quickly. And they're like, oh, look, you got, you know, but look, but I'm like, but that, that, those are extras. They are not main characters. Like, if you had made Ray, for example, a lesbian, or you had made, if you had actually been brave enough to embrace Penn, then yeah. I would, like, it, not only an interracial. Uh, LGBT couple, but uh, an LGBT couple that is like they're, they're at the front center of the Star Wars product. So, like, I'm glad we're yeah. seeing people of color. I'm absolutely happy about that. But it's very like I'm laughing very much at this universe that has somehow managed to create the idea that we can live in a universe where lightsabers, aliens, starships, and Millennium Falcons and Chewbacca and all those things they can be real. But the idea of two people of the same gender kissing each other or have you know having sex or yeah. having a family is just no i mean we have to think about the children you know it's going to damage their 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 you know their whole uh, reality if they see two men kissing each other and living well, just so, more- yeah this is this is where you got you got you got to get you got to get more current with star wars cuz i i in andor there is a there is a, a same sex couple <laughs> in the show, um, well, front and center. Show, like I, I watched the first three episodes. I was gonna wait till all all episodes had come out on Disney Plus. So uh, that's fair. This isn't a spoiler. This doesn't it doesn't change anything in the story. So, but I'll just let you know like that that is there. Like that there and and it's and it's it's actually like impactful to the story. This relationship between these two women is 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 a major part of the plot. Um, I or or I shouldn't say that because we're not done the season yet. I don't know what knock on effects some of this is going to have, but the their relationship and some of the tension in their relationship is going to have an effect on one of the characters that's going to have a knock on effect on the plot of the story. Right. So I uh, she's going to make decisions based on certain things uh, or already has even um, that have to do with the fact that she's in a relationship with another woman. So I I. Yeah, I mean, like, I think we're getting there. I think it's just, it is one of those things. Star Wars is tough because it's like, you got to be across all these different, different mediums and different, uh, di- different timelines and, uh, you know, uh, all over the place. You got to be an animation fan and watching the live action shows and the movies and reading of some course. books, and, which is not fair. And, and like, what we need is representation in the movies more than anything. And the movies are the place where it falls short. Well, let's most. be fair, so, though, Michael. Let's be fair. We haven't, ha- you know, we can't we can't say movies have excluded us in the last couple of years because we mm-hmm. haven't had any Star Wars movies in the last couple of years. Bingo, um, bingo. So, um, anyways, I'm, I'm, I think Star Wars belongs on TV. Honestly, I think Star Wars is like it's a better. I think television is a better medium. Plus, you know, I mean, we can also have Star Wars movies, but like on Disney Plus or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy with things the way that they are right now. I, I, if they're gonna make movies, I want those movies to be good, and I want them to mean something. I don't want them to just shovel movies out the way. Well, you're excited about Rise of Skywalker, so are you excited about Damon Lindelof writing a Star Wars movie? Because I am. 
I don't know. I, I'm I I, I I go back and forth. No, I mean like I loved Lost, and and I think that other stuff that he's done is good. I just worry. I it's it, the my worry. It's not about Damon Lindelof specifically. It's about the fact that Lucasfilm is more worried about names that they can attach to these projects rather than telling good stories. And that's where we've gotten into a little bit of the trouble that we're in with the movies. Is that like they've they've picked some people that maybe weren't the best fits. Um, and then there have been issues, right? So, well, that's um, how I felt about Obi Wan because you know that was supposed like originally when that show was in development. I think I may have texted you when this happened. A Persian writer was actually hired to yeah. write Obi Wan, and then Kathleen Kennedy didn't agree with his vision or whatever. Now, again, I love Obi Wan season one, and I'm hoping we're gonna get season two. Yeah. But I was like, you hired a writer who barely has any experience and you fired a Persian one who has a w- bigger resume and is well more established. But of course, and I, and I can almost imagine some of the issues that she had that, that but like she thinks are a problem, but not a problem to the rest of us. So, you know, it's like, you know, it's, yeah, I think potentially. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, the, the, it, that, that one, that's a tough one, right? But because that that one, that's a, that's one of those projects that was under development, like from day one of the Disney acquisition that turned into like, it was like six different things before what actually got on screen got on screen. So I think I think that they um, and I think the pandemic had a lot to do with that you know, in changing it. Oh, yeah, you're right. That did happen. It's just the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I, it, I think I, it was a I'm, timing thing. They were ready to go, and then things shifted, and 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 things had to change, right? So, anyways, I we I'm sure that you and I could talk about this forever. I have to, true. I have to cut us off and wrap it up. That's all good. Um, but but I I we'll just put the ellipsis on it, right? I think that this is a conversation that that I think I think. Hey, I'm going to give you a list of things that I think you need to watch. I think that, that that I that I think are are important vital Star Wars things, and I'd love to come back and talk again about some of this stuff once you've seen some of those things. Um, yeah, Clone Wars is on my Disney Plus list for sure. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, it looks very appealing after I watch Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, there's, there's, I, in my opinion, almost all of it is fantastic. So, uh, Star Wars Resistance is the only thing that I would probably say. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody, but every, I, everything else, I think everybody can find something to enjoy. But, um, Andy, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for talking about Star Wars with me. me. I, thank you for also talking about Black Adam with me <laughs> by well, no, accident. I, of course, no, but it's. I mean, listen, you and I, we. I mean, Michael, we became like. I mean, listen. I always described him as uh, the Oliver Queen to my Barry Allen. You know, like <laughs> you know. We, I mean, you know, we gotta, we gotta be a little opposed every once in a while. I think that's uh, <laughs> healthy. Um, where can people? Where can people find you? Where can't they find you? Jeez. Where can? Where can they not? They cannot find me where I live. That's uh, <laughs> my secret to share. But uh, you can find me at Andy Babacht. Babacht is spelled uh, B E H B A K H T. Uh, for those wondering, you know, um, just because we talked about for uh, Iran and so much, uh, Babacht is uh, it means happy happiness. Uh, so you know, which kind of seems fitting for me. I'm a pretty happy person. Uh, you can find me at uh, Screen Rant. I'm a senior writer there, where I am constantly writing about television and movies, all the latest uh, hot juice in the in the world of Hollywood. I'm also a co-host uh, of the Flash Podcast, which is part of the DC Podcast Network, which uh, Michael and uh, Amanda, our dearest Amanda, were part of for Quiver to Green Podcast, aka the best. Arrow Pike is on the internet. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I also run the Marvel Report, which is a website for all things Marvel, but there might be some changes coming there. Uh, and I'm also a host of Endless Multiverse, a, a YouTube show I do every Friday on the YouTube, YouTube.com slash Chainsaw Reacts. And uh, if you guys know, he's a reactor now. He and I do a show together. Um, Awesome. And yeah, and I'm at and back on all but Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Vero, Twitch. I'm also streaming on Twitch. So uh getting go back to Gotham Knights pretty soon. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. I yeah, I mean everybody go go follow Andy on all of those places, especially if you're into DC. Uh because that that is I think that's your that's your that's your zone. That's my that's Star your number Wars. One, that's right? my Star Wars. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Patreon producer, Brian Murawski. And uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can do that at patreon.com slash thunderquack. 
I uh, and get episodes early. You get you get them. I mean, like early. If, you know, if I put them out on time, then I guess they're early. This one will be out on Patreon first, and then eventually come out on podcast feeds. So, um, you know, like it, it, you did technically get this one early. You just got it. You got it late early instead of regular early. Does that make sense? Time is an illusion. I uh, yeah, you make yeah, you make you make Barry Allen look logical in comparison. Yeah, <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, again, thank you so much, uh, uh, Andy, and thank you everyone for listening. And we will catch you on the next episode. May the force be with you. Thank you for listening to Thunderquack Force Perspectives. Our opening theme is composed for us by Christy Carew. Follow Force Perspectives on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ForcePOV. And join us on Discord at thunderquack.com slash discord. Support the show by visiting us at patreon.com slash thunderquack to get early access to episodes, leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast service, or buy merch at store.thunderquack.com. Force Perspectives is a part of the Thunderquack Podcast Network.